Hello, YouTube, hi. Uh, YouTube user Chris recently asked us to do a video about electrolyte imbalances, so I decided today I was gonna do a video about hyponatremia because it's my own personal favorite electrolyte imbalance. I appreciate that having my own favorite electrolyte imbalance is super lame, but I also have my own YouTube channel where I talk about medicine, so I think the boat's pretty much sailed on that one. So, hyponatremia, it literally means too little sodium in the bloodstream. As an F1, I'd see this one all the time and I'd never really know what to do about it. Do I give more fluids, less fluids, ready salted crisps? It's actually straightforward enough provided you've got the right information and ask yourself the right questions. Remember, in mild cases, hyponatremia can be asymptomatic, but in extremis, it can cause headaches, nausea, seizures, and even a coma. So it's definitely something that we need to sort out. Treatment does largely come down to either giving more fluids or less fluids, but it depends on what the cause is and what the patient's fluid status is, so it does require a little bit of thought. It's all quite simple, you just need five pieces of information, five simple, non-invasive little chunklets, that's all it takes. Plasma sodium, which you already have, plasma osmolality, urine sodium, urine osmolality, and a decent assessment of their fluid status. Basically, are they wet? or are they dry? Anyway, we'll put a pin in those for the time being because before you can understand hyponatremia, you need to understand what the kidneys do to sodium. Here comes the science bit. Deep in the human kidney, in the deepest depths of the distal convoluted tubule. Quick renal refresher, remember aldosterone acts on the DCT and ADH on the collecting duct, but for today, let's picture them both snuggled up next to each other so we can get an idea of how they work. Aldosterone acts on the sodium-potassium co-transporter in the distal convoluted tubule. This co-transporter reabsorbs sodium back into the bloodstream from the urine and secretes potassium into the tubule. In doing so, it raises the concentration of solute in the blood compared to the urine, creating a concentration gradient that pulls water back into the blood via osmosis. Put simply, water follows sodium, so aldosterone increases both blood sodium and blood volume. For today's video, we can pretty much just ignore potassium. Sorry, potassium. Now, ADH increases the collecting duct's permeability to water by translocating aquaporins. Increase ADH and more water is absorbed back into the bloodstream, concentrating the urine. That's another good way to increase blood volume when dehydrated. All making sense so far? Cool. Now, let's get back to those five pieces of information that you gathered. Now, this is gonna be an interactive video, so if you have a patient's investigations to hand, you can use them to work through this video series. So, to start off with, take a gander at your serum osmolality. Is it low or is it high? Go ahead, click away.